welcome folks to another edition of Tiffin Cast. Today I'm with photographer from Seattle. His name is Kirk Masson. And Kirk, I know you've been on the show before, so to say welcome is kind of weird, but welcome again, I guess. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's good to be back. Wonderful. I know you're in uh, San Francisco visiting family right now, so we'll make this very, very quick. Uh, this is being recorded over the Thanksgiving holiday time frame, and so I wanted to make sure we get this um, done quickly and efficiently. Um, I'm mostly excited about your new offering, uh, which is the Mastin Labs, uh, a new company. Apparently, uh, I'm assuming uh, you've you've introduced all photographers to that um, really wants. I think you want to uh, cultivate the idea that photographers who are shooting digital can achieve film-like experiences in their images. Is that is that close enough? Is that true? Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, basically, uh, Masson Labs came from um, some presets that I was working on for my own use uh, as a film photographer. And I started, well, I always was shooting film, like, since I, since I started. So, like, since the very beginning, I was shooting film. Um, and then when digital took off, you know, I, I, jump, I jumped on that. I thought, you know, I don't really need to uh, film anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then as my career turned more towards weddings, I found that um, I really, really missed that look and that feel of film. But at the same time, like, I couldn't really afford to shoot everything 100% film. Like, I, I really wanted to because I really love that look. And if I didn't love that look, I wouldn't even bother with it. But it, it's that important to me. Um, so I tried different ways of getting my digital look like film. Um, different presets, you know, bought many different kinds and basically out of frustration for not being able to get even, even a close match, I started making my own. And the advantage that I had was that I, I had at one point bought a Fuji Frontier scanner. So this is like the same scanner that Richard Photo Lab uses or the Find Lab or Indie, Indie Film Lab um, to get like a really special look and that was like a cost saving thing was to get this scanner, but it was also like a way for me to really control the process from beginning to end. And because I had this scanner, I was now able to like really fine tune the presets I was working on. And, uh, in a nutshell, like over three years, like I finally got portrait to be absolutely perfect. Like it's an exact match to where I couldn't even tell, um, you know, what was film and what was digital unless I looked at the metadata later, you know, if I went back to something. Right. You have an example on your website, actually. Uh, the website is mastinlabs.com, and I'll, I'll include that in the, in the blog post underneath the, uh, the video. But you have an, uh, an image uh, of a couple, and I can't tell the difference. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it took a couple of years. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, what the, the tricky part of making a preset that actually has a goal. Like for example, for my for my my goal was to make it so that you could match like film and digital like exactly. Is that you ha you have to figure out how a certain film stock sees different colors and translate that across to a digital file. So the way that Portrait 400 sees like yellow and green in particular, mm -hmm. that was like really tricky to get that to translate into a Canon or a Nikon RAW file because um, there's probably like. 80 variables just to get those two colors to to look right. Mm -hmm. um, but again, after like playing around with it for three years, you know, scanning scanning my own film and also shooting digital and being able to control the entire process myself, I was able to get them to be exact. And um, I was sharing it with a few friends over the years who were just like really stoked on it. They they just loved it. And then uh, eventually. Um, from a few different people, they told me, you know, you really should like make this public because it's so awesome. So kind of like almost against my will, um, <laughs> this yeah. com company started to form. Excellent. And, uh, yeah. And to be totally honest, I was really nervous to even launch it um, because I'm so concerned with it being perfect and like being totally accurate. Um, and also I was thinking like, who would be interested in buying just like one preset? I mean, it's essentially like mm -hmm. to get you to nail like Portrait 400. It also works on Portrait 160. I, I found out like exactly too, but, but who was going to buy just like one thing? Um, 
but the response has been like totally incredible. And uh, already within the first like month of launching, um, there are several labs that now want to use my presets over anything to match uh, digital to film. So they they do like they're they're like, they're like a hybrid lab. They do like film and digital right. editing. And then there's even a school in England that's considering using or teaching just with my presets. Um, and then there's even some people at WPPI doing workshops like based around it. And uh, it's been totally awesome because these are all things I didn't even expect to happen. I mean, this it, it's all just kind of like, I don't know, creating itself right now. So, yeah. Wonderful. That's great. Uh, you know, you and I talked uh, some time ago, um, and we we sort of I'd wondered uh, whether the idea of you choosing Portra four hundred, for instance, was uh, a deliberate attempt at just sort of nailing one film. I mean, obviously, you don't use just one one film when you go out to photograph a wedding. You know, one kind of film. I mean, I, I remember photographing with you know the T Max thirty two hundred or or T-Max 400 or Tri-X and you know those things are all also sort of almost required in a way you know when you're when you're looking at a body of work that you want to make look like film so is your idea then to move from Portra to other film emulsions as well or is it just like you, you're going to lock on to Portra 400 and that's it um oh well, I definitely am. I mean, like I'm tackling like Fuji 400H next, and then and then I'm developing an entire like ecosystem around Triax um, that's going to be really awesome. Uh, but no, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to just stop with Portra. But uh, just the way that I work, like when I release something, it has to be totally perfect. So um, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Because perfect. Is sort of a weird word in a way because, you know, first of all, photographs are subjective, right? Yeah. Uh, the, you're, you aren't really going to be able to see, uh, most people aren't going to be able to see the difference between uh, an image that's been enhanced with one action over another in a sense. They may, they may be able to tell, but... I guess in the, at the end of the day, does it what 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 matters most about the the image for you? Oh, for me, well, yeah. I mean, the thing the thing is, why is should, why should it be perfect? First of all, why is it why is it okay. important for it to be perfect? And how can it be perfect when exposure to exposure, you're going to find differences in you know way things are seen and and exposed anyway. Well, the, the reason, I mean, like the reason I even like went back to film even was that my frustration with digital was I never felt like a picture was really done. Uh, when I went in to edit, you know, in Lightroom or Photoshop, I felt like I, I always had this really unsettled feeling that like no matter what I did, like it, it wasn't as good as it could have been. And that, you know, coming back to an image, I might edit it a totally different way the next time. And... I felt that without being able to like really pin down how I wanted things to look that I would never really find like my my vision or like my artistic you know signature I guess in my work and the thing that's nice about film is that it's got 200 years of tradition behind it and fine tuning to where um you know thousands of people have refined portrait or any any film emulsion that's out oh portrait's fairly new but yeah I was going to say yeah <laughs> It's, it's got a it's got a really good pedigree, so it goes you know way way back. Sure. Um, you know everything leading up to it, and with film it was like I would I would I would make a photo and know that when I got it back or like when it was scanned correctly that it was done, totally done. Like this is exactly what I wanted, and it and it gave me a consistency. So with creating a preset like for a digital image, the thing that I wanted to make sure was that it was matching some kind of standard. And for me, that was Portrait 400, because that's what I shoot the most of. Um, and, I mean, again, this, this made me nervous because I was like, you know, the, the last thing the world needs is another, like, Lightroom preset option, because there's so many out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I just felt like a lot of the, I would say, 
I'm just going to say all of the other ones are based on more of a ro romanticized idea of what film looks like, kind of like how people think Instagram it must be what film looks like, and not really based on like accurate portrayal of what film actually looks like, which is really subtle. Um, and so, you know, I, I mean, ultimately, I just had to make my own. Um, and I was worried that like when I released them, people are going to be like, oh, it's not a big enough change. Like, it, you know, it needs to be like just in your face, you know, <laughs> film. And, and the thing is, is like, if you shoot a lot of film, it's really subtle. I mean, that's what makes film beautiful is that it's subtle. Yes. It's not like a big tsunami of post-processing all at once. So. Right. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, more color films coming. Obviously, Tri-X is coming uh, yes. at some point. Um, what is it that you're offering uh, for Black Friday? Is it something that you, you can talk about now, or do you want to wait till Black Black Friday? Oh, I can talk about it now. Okay. Tell um, us a little about a little bit about what you're you're planning on doing. Well, um, basically, my my. Each preset pack is $119, so that gives you an emulsion. So right now I've got Portra 400, um, which I'll, I'll tell the audience that is actually Portra 160 and 400. They're, I've done so much testing that I've determined that they're exactly the same except for a grain mm -hmm. and maybe a tiny bit of contrast that you could, it's like not even worth making another preset to just cover 160. Um, but that preset pack is usually one nineteen, and it's going to be on sale for sixty nine dollars uh, for twenty four hours on Black Friday. Wow, that's great. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of people um, were upset that they missed missed the launch price of fifty nine dollars. Sure. Um, so yeah, so there's going to be a great sale on Black Friday. It'll never be that cheap again. Um, there will be other sales in the future, but it'll never be that price again. Um, and the other thing, so I wanted to mention two things, too, about when you buy something from me, is one is that the presets will always be, like, added to and refined. If, if I ever find anything that improves, like, the way grain looks or, um, you know, right now I'm actually going kind of down a rabbit hole with, like, non-Caucasian skin, how it's rendered, um, you know, across Canon and Nikon. Uh, there's like really fine little things that mm -hmm. I will add to the presets for people who've already bought them. Okay. So you're not you're not just getting like a one time thing. This is like a system that's going to be built on over time. Excellent. So, yeah. Um, and the other thing too that I wanted to mention, just because I have the chance to, is um, another another problem that I wanted to solve besides accuracy with presets was that I felt that the entire approach was confusing with almost everyone else. Um, so the way mine are set up is, is the same way that you would actually use a Frontier scanner and film. So you start with like a base scan, so you've got a base preset, and then you've got a bunch of sub-presets that tweak that, that are named after like what you'd find on a Fuji Frontier scanner. So I modeled it exactly after how an actual film shooter would work with a film. Okay. And that's why, like, when my Tri-X ecosystem comes out, it's going to be so exciting because it's going to take into account, like, the developer you use, um, how many stops you push the film. Mm -hmm. It might even include, like, agitation and, and things that wow. will actually, yeah, be, like, super exciting to <laughs> that actually shoot black and white. It won't be, like, Tri-X, Tri-X Plus, Tri-X Minus, uh, you know, things that actually don't have anything to do with actual Tri-X. So... Um, yeah, I hope that's ex I hope that's exciting to other people too. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, Kirk. Appreciate the the quick chat about uh, uh, Portra 400, uh, the emulsion film pack that you're offering through your new c company, MastonLabs.com. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on the launch, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And I look forward to talking to you again when Tri-X launches, because I know I, as, a, as a black and white photographer from way back where, when I, I used to shoot Tri-X like nobody's business, and I still have negatives after negatives piled in my archive. So I am really excited about that as well. So bring it on, brother. I will. I will. Yeah, look, look for it at the latest next summer. So okay. Fuji 400 first. Okay. And Tri-X. So. Excellent. Thanks, Kirk. Thanks for making this happen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care.
You too. Bye.